Hops is a 1978 comedy directed by Barbara Peters and starring Jillian Kessner, Sterling Frazier, Dorothy Berman, Peter Liapis, Anthony Manino, Paul Ryan, Al Hobson, and Dick Miller. The film opens in space and rips off Star Wars. This was originally written under the title Car Hops, but then Star Wars fucking happened. Dick Miller owes some money at his failing drive-in. Maybe you ought to try real estate. I've been in the drive-in business 15 years. What do I know about real estate? As much as you know about driving. Burn. I need 30 days. Just 30 days. Can't do, Jerry. Sorry. It sounds like Jerry is fucked. What kind of pies you got? I'll get you a menu. Hey, if I wanted a menu, I'd ask for one. That's assault. We've got banana cream, Boston cream, cherry cream, chocolate cream, coconut cream, pineapple cream, strawberry cream, and whipped cream. Haven't you got any regular pies? What the hell do you consider regular pie? Forget it! I'll have a Dr. Pepper and some fries. Got it. The customer is always right. Only 20% of the time. This guy looks like a fucking serial killer. Uh, give it to me. I, I could have choked on this thing. I could have I, I could have turned purple. I could have become terrified and died. Here's hoping. The guy goes full Karen and Jerry reacts accordingly. Some equipment gets repoed and Jerry snaps to saying it's time to close shop. But Cupcake and Angel offer to buy the place from him. You got the money. You got to try it. The problem is they don't have any money, so they go to the bank and are denied. But we know where this shit is going, and they're approved. As they leave, they run into Lieutenant Sanders, which is some kind of foreshadowing, I guess. When addressing a woman, do I look like an ice cream man? Yes. Rom meets with Carter Axe, revealing the gas station of the future. You've designed a prototype. I want you to come with me tomorrow to see a piece of land. The computer's picked it as a perfect place to build our flagship station. Let me guess, the property you want is Jerry's Diner. At the moment, there's a little drive-in restaurant on it. But I heard he's going broke. There's a working on the place montage featuring a safe ladder and a cook desperate for a job. Carter shows up and is befuddled by the new ownership. You know, that's not possible. He promised to sell to me. Well, look, I don't know anything about that, but he took our money. Well, that doesn't matter. You know, there are laws against this sort of thing. What laws? Then sue Dick Miller. She's picking that guy's pocket. You have violated the law of infracted torts. The what? That's only the beginning. Next, you have flagrantly broken the prohibitions against a uh, fiduciary lend lease above the prime interest rate. Nice rant. Then Carter and Dat Hair leave. How did you get it? I pick it. You're a pickpocket? Oh, no. I am, how you say, a kleptomanic. Yes. The ladies make a plan to get ready, which features a roller skating montage, then some volleyball, and I'm suddenly wondering if I'm watching a beer commercial. Here's some time lapse of the sunset. Then we're at a disco. All we need is a CB radio and that's 1978 in a nutshell. Sunrise. Okay, we get it? All right, landscaping, and oh, look, back to the sun. Did the movie break or something? Then we finally cut to this. And they had a rough day. Take three deep breaths. Of cocaine. She's ODing, man. 
Kong shows up and orders, but they're out of food, so he gets pissed and goes inside to commit some assault. Then Cupcake whips his ass. So he threatens murder. You right. I eat first, I kill later. Then leaves. Angel gets back talking about the money they made and Kong returns. And he died. Nope, he's still alive! Carter calls to double his price, but denied. Tennis! Carter's newest plan is for his son Norman to get a job at the drive-in to get info and commit sabotage. The ladies laugh at the idea of Norman working there, then he drops this on them. And if you don't hire me, I'm going to report you to the Civil Rights Commission for not being an equal opportunity employer. Norman gets a job and then reports nothing to his dad. I want you to prove they perform sex acts for money. Jesus! How long this time? I swear to God, it was the same fucking thing we just watched. The next day, Norman tries to get some info. Uh, Angel, you are a fine-looking woman. Thank you, Norman. No, I mean, you really are. I mean, you must have a lot of temptation thrown your way. Dick pics? I appeared in a film. Stark naked. Oh, here's some real dirt. Nope, it's baby pics. Norman and Dad set up a health inspection that doesn't go very well. Why don't you use a rat? There it is. They fail, but since this is the first time, they get probation and a fine, so nothing happened. You would think this would be hanging over their head for the rest of the film, but nope, we're never going to see the health inspector again. Danielle is suspicious and mugs Norman learning what his identity truly is. And the ladies plot the seduction of Norman. You gotta offer him something his daddy can't. Pussy? Cupcake brings Norman his wallet and wouldn't this house be a dig giveaway that he's full of shit? They head to the bedroom and here's the return of sunset footage. It's a waterbed! Another hit for 1978 bingo! They get it on, and she busts him out. I want you to betray your father. Great idea! I'll do it! That was fucking easy. And they begin to really fall in love. There's a pool montage followed by a moment at poolside and we're to the next morning without 90 seconds of boring landscape footage. Cupcake is getting the D, so it's time for Danielle, so they set her up with Kong, featuring his makeover, and they wind up in the shower together. I'm not having another failure! No! No more failures for me! I've had enough! Oh. Oh. Get me mad, don't kill it, Always a good sign. Ron shows up to make another offer to Angel, then he hops in the car and flirts, but she's not interested in either. This is stalking. Mad Dog shows up, and how in the hell did she know he was not cool? There's some produce chaos with this guy jumping on a pile of other guys? Oh, shit! It had to happen. There's a car chase ending with an accident, and what a getaway! Ron discovers that Carter was the one to unleash Mad Dog, so he goes to warn Angel, and they are suddenly in love. Aw, oh, fuck. I'm wondering if these sunrise and sunset scenes were just to fill in where people were getting it on. That night, they set up an ambush for Mad Dog. How long a wait do you want before this thing goes off? Three minutes. You sure that's long enough? Holy shit! The gang arrives pretending to be intoxicated, and we shouldn't be surprised that a guy named Mad Dog, who is using a bomb, is also packing heat. Whatever your plan was, it was screwed in 30 seconds. 
Low ramp Vincent Gardenia goes to investigate and oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Whoops. <laughs> My car! They overpowered the thugs and it's a party at Norman's where he tells his dad to fuck off and agrees to finance the girl's business endeavors. They're all going in that pool. Star Hops features the go-to plot of a lot of these movies. A small business facing down a rich guy or a corporation. This time the execution isn't the best with a low budget and a bare bones cast. Honestly, for such a thriving business, you never see them with customers. It's not the worst of this type of film, but it's certainly not the best either. I'm still trying to figure out if those sun shots were part of the original edit or was it a uh, cut out that wasn't so filthy. Either way, this is definite second feature material. You can't compete with them. I mean, I've been caught a pound and a finger licked into the poorhouse.